we, we have had several studies at this point, which I will go into as to trying to determine a, a plausible scenario for the collapse. As of this point, none of them have presented us with anything that I think could be reasonably called a, a convincing and detailed account of why the collapse has occurred. Uh, and the question that's been addressed previously, the enormous destruction of physical evidence, uh, as Chris was saying, the site was, was scrubbed very thoroughly. Uh, out of the entire mass of the buildings that were destroyed, uh, the National Institutes of Standards and Technology, who are now doing the ongoing investigation, managed to save about 200, 240 pieces out of the entire building. Uh, all of the rest of it was, was basically recycled. Uh, you know, the obvious question is what, what does it mean that there was a controlled demolition? At the simplest level, it means that someone had a lot of access to the buildings over a long enough period of time to set this up. It implies, as many other things have tonight, that the, the people who had effective control of the site had an interest in having it scrubbed and making sure that uh, no information was available, uh, that a, a forensic reconstruction couldn't be done. Even in much smaller catastrophes, we typically will reconstruct things as, as, as completely as possible. Uh, for example, TWA Flight 800 was construct was re, you know pieces were dredged off the, the bottom of the sea. Uh, a, a complete reconstruction was done to allow a, a detailed analysis. In this case, the exact opposite was done. The first report that was really issued on this was issued by FEMA in collaboration with the American Society of Civil Engineers. There was basically a volunteer team from ASCE that had very limited access to the site. A lot of the pieces that they were able to retrieve were retrieved by going to landfills and trying to find interesting pieces before they were disposed of. The initial FEMA report uh, basically acknowledged that the kerosene would have burned off very quickly. What wasn't destroyed in the initial fireball would have been consumed fairly rapidly and would have only really served as an ignition for the rest of the material. And the second point being that the, the fuel here really was strictly office contents. If you think of a modern office with copying machines, computers, uh, and as has been previously mentioned, the, the smoke, particularly from building two just before it collapsed was, was very black looking. Uh, this is generally an indication of an inefficient fire in which there is not enough oxygen for the amount of fuel. These types of fires typically burn very cool. They, they are not hot flames like blow torches. Uh, the cores themselves, basically, I, if you've seen diagrams of the building, there's a large central rectangle in each of the towers that contained 47 columns. And these columns basically were the, the, the primary structural support of the building. They were given the role of supporting the, the whole gravitational load of the building. Uh, since they were so strong, it would have been reasonable to think that they would have withstood, at least to some extent, the collapse. But in fact, as we see after the buildings collapsed, there was basically only little stubs of these things standing up a floor or two above the ground level. The cores did not have much in them that would burn. The cores basically were dedicated to things like elevator shafts, utility shafts, stairways. Uh, so you have drywall material, you have a little bit of carpeting, you don't really have any inflammable material in the core itself. The core was specifically designed so it could not function as a chimney. They did not want in the case of a fire, for the fire to be able to travel through the elevators or for air to come in through the elevators. So they were designed with what this uh, architect, Aaron Swirsky, I believe it was, referred to as a hermetically sealed system. There were fire shutters that were designed to close off the core in the event of, of an event like this. And those, as far as we know, functioned properly, which means that there was a very limited amount of oxygen available. Okay, as far as the issue of what failed and how, uh, some of the initial suggestions, and these showed up in the NOVA documentary, which is a good example of what I like to call proof by computer animation. Uh, Thomas Egar, who was a material scientist but not a structural engineer who became a, a spokesman for these documentaries, uh, indicated that the floors had somehow failed, that the trusses supporting the floors had failed. 
this was the, the theory that was put forward actually in the initial FEMA report. Uh, subsequently, there have been basically complete contradictions of that. Uh, Jim Hoffman has done quite a bit of research which is available on the web concerning the, the problems with this idea that the floors would have simply fallen. There was a study done by Weidlinger Associates. The chief engineer there was Mathis Levy, who's a very well-known authority on building collapses. He specifically disavowed the idea of pancaking or collapsing of the floors. And the most recent official report we have on this, which is from National Institutes of Standards and Technology, NIST, rejected the idea that floor collapse was part of it. Uh, and so as, as a result, we have basically no sequential model at this point. What NIST has suggested is that there was some kind of simultaneous collapse of the cores, but they have not attempted to uh, give any kind of, of uh, modeling as to whether those cores could have, in fact, been destroyed by the fires in the way that they claim. Unfortunately, the material that would have allowed a detailed fire analysis, the actual physical evidence, is all gone.